Hi, how have you Just been? before we go live, Alistair's like, I know it's been a month, but what's the worst thing that could happen? I'm like, thank you. You just cursed us. And yet, oh, you mean, uh -huh. gosh, that ring light is so very, very bright. Oh, I love that pale. It's, oh, God. Okay. Ooh. Hello. Hi. Hi, everybody. How are you? I know. It's been forever. Um, and then we did a holiday. And then Twitch wouldn't change things, and it's like, what our buttons do? So we are, like, figuring this all out. It's... <laughs> Tony is making faces at us on the screen. It's fantastic. Uh, yes, we are back. We did have a wonderful vacation. We did many things. I'm sure we will be talking about the anecdotes of the many things for yes. quite a while. Um, you got your podcast bio written up. Well Amazing. done, Katie. Good job. Good job. Exactly. Uh, the Kenneth Stewarts. Yes, that's exactly right. That is the, the combined last name we have decided. In, in all seriousness, that was the exact moment where I realized that my parents had the greatest mother eaters of members of the family. Where, and also the fact that she's the head of the family. Because um, for the longest time, my, oh, mom, was, me, right? my, my mom was <laughs> like, so when you get married, no, the when, uh, when you get married, your name will be Alistair Stewart Kenner. And I was like, no, oh, Kenneth Stewart sounds I, better. I'd like some more tea. <laughs> and then after about two years, we got a package addressed to the Kenner Stewarts. And I, yeah. I was just like, my mom gets it. It's fine. <laughs> Todd is really good at funny faces. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to be a very chill, a very casual. Oh, so what's this about a hack? Okay. Thank you for the segue. So one of the things we've got to talk about just really quick before we introduce Tanya is that um, Twitch has changed around kind of like what it's done with ads. And it's basically encouraging people to take more active control over when ad breaks run on their stream. So they've given us some new tools and some known ways that we can see when the ad breaks are going to come up. And one of the incentives they've given us is that if you run a certain number of minutes of ads in a certain period of time, it will disable the auto ad that runs when somebody who is not a subscriber immediately joins the channel. So as a result of that, um, we are going to be uh, practicing our television voices yes. and trying to work in... We'll be right back after these messages. Exactly. Um, this is very new to us. We're still working on, you know, how to talk about it and what to do while the ad breaks are running. We started it on Sunday. We're going to kind of evolve it as we go along. Um, but... The hope is that by taking more control over this, one, those of you who do experience ads aren't going to miss out on the content that we are delivering, and two, it's going to disable that, oh, I just want to pop in and see something really quick. I don't want to sit through two minutes of ads when I, when I join your channel. So that's why you will see us talking about and taking ad breaks kind of yeah. from here on out. So It will feel go. a little weird at first, and then before you know it, it will be weird that we never... And uh, uh, Hawkeye's talking about the Mare Bros had to rethink their breaks because of it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly that. Exactly that. So, by all means, share share your wisdom with us about how the other people are doing this. Um, for our sake, it just means, you know, we will maybe be taking more than one break per stream. You know, that's not a bad thing. Hydrate, don't dehydrate, all that good stuff. So, I think that's out of the way. You got, ooh, buff, you made us all blurry for a second. We, now we get to embarrass Tonya back, right? Yes, we do. Okay, go. Okay, Tonya Ransom. So we have a fantastic, fantastic, where are all my buttons? Guest this week. And if there's anyone on this planet who has too many projects going on at once and too many genres, just like us, it's Tonya. <laughs> Tonya is a force for good in everything she does. Yes. Nightlight is one of the most important and best horror and fiction podcasts. And Ignite Award winning! And Ignite Award winning podcast. Uh, and we are absolutely delighted to see that Tonya has, uh, along with our good friend Jen Zink. Hey Jen! Hi Jen! Who's in we the love chat, you Jen! And, and who has done incredible audio production work on this. Uh, has put together The Afflicted, which is a full cast audio drama, which launches on Halloween I believe. Oh. I think I'm gonna have to. Yeah, I see yes. nodding. Yes, yeah. Monday. Monday is the will be the debut of Afflicted, and um, to join us is Tony Ransom, the creator, and uh, the creator of Nightlight Pod, which is Ignite Award winning. Like we said, black spec, black horror spec fic. Um, Tanya is also narrating an audiobook and 
uh, supporting an anthology, and we're gonna turn it over to her. And, Force for good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not not a lot of sleep between the three of us, <laughs> but uh, absolute force for good. So, cross your fingers, Ma. Remember how to make little buttons. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to live. Yes. Yes. Yay. Uh, Yay! Hey! Hey, right. hey buddy. Hi, Tanya. How are you? Good. Um, also, I was Tanya trying has not the most cry. amazing bookcase in creation. Oh, you will my notice. God, Thank your you. bookcase. Her, like, that is so cool. Game of Thrones-esque <laughs> bookcase in the background there. Also, lipstick game matching the headphones. And the glasses. Oh, choice! Thank you. Thank you. I think I messed up my lipstick, though, making that funny face for you guys. It was totally worth it. It's worth uh, it. Totally there worth it. we go. Fix now. <laughs> yeah, the bookcase is amazing. One of these days, you know what we got to get you with some like underlighting, like outline some of the spaces yeah. and like lights or like. I have some. Actually, I just don't, I don't know how to plug them in. They're USB. And so I have to like, well, I know how to do it. I just need to get the thing to do it. But it's like, it's all like, sticky and stuff so that I could like line it and everything. I just, you know. Doing too much other stuff to worry about lights for my book. <laughs> so how have you been? Very busy, but you know, in the best way. Tell us all about it. Oh man. Uh, okay. So of course, like Nightlight is still doing its thing. We are about to wrap up season five shortly. Um, we are now doing year round episodes. We're not taking a break between uh, not November and February anymore because of our wonderful, wonderful patrons. Um, helping us fund episodes year round. So super, super excited about that. Of course, I'm working on Afflicted with Jen and a whole bunch of other really amazing, amazing people that I'm so, so lucky to have as part of the cast and crew that premieres on Halloween. Yeah. I'm doing some writing for a couple of different podcasts as well. They're not out yet, so I can't say anything specific about those. But when they come out, of course, I will share them with everybody. Um, working on an anthology of uh, zombie stories from the African diaspora. So not the traditional, you know, Romero kind oh, of zombies cool. uh, that we're currently fundraising for. So if you are so inclined, go to bit.ly slash blackened roots to get oh, your nice. copy of that, as well as a copy of my novella Risen um, as part of the perks package, along with a couple of other novellas by Elmarie Wood and some other writers that are part of Mocha Memoirs Press. And I'm sure that there's some other stuff that I'm doing that I just don't remember right now. <laughs> oh my God. Right? It's okay. a lot. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty tired. <laughs> so tell us, a, let's start with Nightlight because that's how you came into our life is, you know, anthology. I, I don't know what to call us. Like, we publish <laughs> weekly short fiction, and then all the vocabulary changed about audio yes. fiction and audio drama, and, you know, some people call pseudopod and nightlight <laughs> anthology shows, and it's like, yeah. the big difference is, of course, it's it's prose. It is a magazine-style yeah. publication, and we take a single story, and it usually has sometimes one voice, sometimes it's a full cast. So, <laughs> how the heck did you get started with 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 fiction, with the fiction world, with the genre world? Um, well, I, I tell people this story all the time, but uh, I grew up with three older brothers, one younger brother, and a dad who loved horror. And, you know, of course, brothers are ruthless. <laughs> and they will make fun of you for everything they can possibly think of. Um, and so I knew that if I was going to watch, you know, horror movies with them, I had to have nerves of steel and, you know, at least pretend that it didn't scare me. And so I really started getting into watching horror like way too young. My parents let me watch anything as long as it didn't have sex scenes in it. That was the only time I had to turn my head. But, you know, people being decapitated, brutally murdered, totally cool. And so I got to watch a lot of horror stuff. <laughs> and um, Halloween was one of the first movies that I watched. And we had an assignment in second grade where we made, like, literally made the physical books, like a picture book, oh, wow. where we got, like, you know, chipboard and some contact paper, and we did our illustrations and our um, writing and everything in it. And I wrote Michael Myers fan fiction. And... <laughs> You're the coolest human I have ever met. <laughs> yes. Very important I to me, you know this. I love that. 
Well, you know, the teacher, of course, called my mom and I was a good kid in school. And so I thought she was calling my mom because she was so proud of the story that I'd written that I'd scared her. And I did. I just didn't realize that I scared her in, not in the way that I intended to scare yeah. her. <laughs> but I got hooked on that feeling. And so, you know, horror writing was always something that I wanted to do. I just never really shared my work with people because I grew up in the deep south in East Texas Bible Belt and it was generally frowned upon to be a fan of or you know especially create anything uh, that was horror related <clears throat> but um, over the years I discovered old time radio like I'd heard of it before but I'd never really listened to the shows you know I'd, I'd heard of like the comedy shows but I didn't realize that there were horror shows and suspense shows and things like mm. that until I was much older and I was like oh my god this would be a great medium to revive like it'd be great if this came back and so this was you know like late 90s early 2000s right and then of course podcasts yeah, yeah exactly and then podcasts became a thing and I was like oh my god this is so much easier now I could totally do this and so um you know, I kept procrastinating, thinking, oh, I'll just wait for the right time when I have the right amount of money. And, you know, all of these things are in place <laughs> to start a podcast. And I realized there was never going to be a right time. So I just decided to jump and do it. And I made a lot of mistakes in the way because I just jumped in <laughs> and did it. But um, I think so far it's turned out pretty OK. Well, so you've done one thing that complain. definitely has... <clears throat> been an innovation i would call of like second wave podcasting and that is seasons yes whereas you know uh, escape pod is in 2005 and in 2005 the idea of how you grow and maintain an audience is consistency <clears throat> and so you know the weekly model was what you had to do and now what 15 18 don't do math don't do the math long, <laughs> don't do long the math. time long time later um <laughs> it, it's very psychologically difficult to move away from the idea of but i didn't release an episode this week my friends are all going to abandon me you know yes <laughs> so yeah i definitely felt that different. way with nightlight as well i just didn't have the money to do it year round. So it was kind of, you know, one of those things where it was like, I could have done it year round, but then I would have had to pay everyone a very small amount of money that I wasn't comfortable with. And mm -hmm. so I opted to just say, you know what, we're going to have seasons and it is what it is. And hopefully that works out. And I mean, it, it did, you know, listenership definitely went down during the off season, which is, you know, to be expected, yeah. but you know, it came right back. So I was, I was really surprised and also thankful to see nice. that people stuck around even that's though I wasn't doing thing you know something every week yeah exactly and that's how we met is uh you are a friend of Alex Hoffelick who's the co-editor of Pseudopods um and then we collaborated on Witching Hour which was our first okay. audio drama and I think at that point you had afflicted well in development yeah, I actually started writing Afflicted um, along with Mallory O'Meara. She was my original partner on this, oh, like oh. years and years and years ago. Like, I think this was 2016, 2017 that we started writing it, um, right when she started doing reading glasses with uh -huh. Bria Grant. Right. And so we were talking about doing it. And then she got, you know, her book deal for her book with uh, about Melissa and Patrick. And, you know, her life kind of came at her fast. And she and was like, I can't do this anymore. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. And so I asked her, you know, last year, I was like, hey, you know, I'd really like to do something with this. Like, you know, what kind of agreement, you know, can we come up with so that you're compensated fairly and, you know, all of that. And she was like, you know, just take it and run with it, basically. Like, you know, she, she was just amazing about it. But, um, you know, a lot of it's changed since then, but a lot of it's also remained the same as what Mallory and I put together. So there's still a lot of her um, footprint and afflicted, mm -hmm. like August is named after her grandfather. Oh, sweet. Um, and so, you know, we kept that obviously because that was something that was important to her. Um, you know, and I want to honor how she was a part of this from the very beginning. Oh. And, you know, now we're actually producing it <laughs> and it's, you know, becoming something that's going to be out there in the world and it's terrifying, but also really, really, really exciting. <laughs> so yeah, you're like, <laughs> what? Today's Wednesday launches on Monday. Yeah. How are you feeling? Are you like, oh God, it's done. I don't have to do anything more. Thank goodness. Are you like, <sighs> no, I'm still, I'm still freaking out because I have Austin Film Festival this weekend. Yeah. So I'm going to be, you know, at that conference speaking and networking and, Ooh. you know, all of that good stuff. So 
immediately after <laughs> you know that so i'm gonna be there friday and saturday and then sunday is our launch party, launch party. for all of our supporters so i'm a little nervous about the launch party because you know, of course i want that to go really well i want people to have a good experience and i've never really done a virtual launch party before mm -hmm. you know i figure it can't be like terribly complicated <laughs> you know but there's always something that can go wrong so i'm a little bit nervous about that and of course i'm nervous about how people are going to receive it even though the people who have heard the first episode so far I've had, you know, wonderful things to say about it. You know, it's still, you know, in the back of my mind, like, what if people really hate it? What if I play this during the virtual party and people are like, oh my God, I can't believe I gave you my money, <laughs> you know, which I don't think is going to happen. But, you know, that doubt is always like, you know, when, when you have anxiety, there's always some little voice in your head that's telling you all of the things that can go wrong. So yes, I'm nervous, you know, we're still in production for the other episodes, trying to get them ready and out as quickly as possible so that people can have early access. So, you know, we're still very much in the thick of production and, you know, poor Jen and I aren't really sleeping <laughs> very much. Oh. At this point, our brains are dead. Oh. You know, like we keep asking each other like, wait, what are we supposed to be doing right now? What's up? What else is on our list? You know, cause we're just starting to lose track of all the different threads. But, you know, after the premiere is done, you know, and we're not so focused on like all the other little logistics, you know, like fulfilling the perks from the Indiegogo campaign yeah, yeah. and all of that. And we can just focus on production. It's going to be a lot yeah, easier, I think. Because <laughs> at this stage, you've really got three jobs going on at once, haven't you? There's the <sighs> launch, there's the fulfillment, and there's writing the other episodes. Yes. So th that yeah. that's rough. And you yeah, know, I'm saying this to both you and Jen in the chat. <laughs> Please look after yourselves. Yes. Oh yeah, we're gonna do so much better next year. <laughs> like we're like we're not doing this to ourselves next so, year. We're going to make sure this is all, you know, that we, we space this out, you know, over a period of months. So we can do all our recording early. But... On it, right? Because you ran a crowdfunder. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, we started it in May and ended in July. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I was gonna. I, I had written the first episode, but I hadn't really written the rest. I'm like, I'd blocked things out. So I was like, okay, I'm going to get started on writing it. But then I got COVID and oh. I got terrible brain fog to where like I could not think of anything. I couldn't remember anything like writing was absolutely out of the question. Oh, so no. I was like, crap, you know, so we lost a few weeks to that. Um, you know, we had a couple of issues with cast that, you know, got really, really sick, like hospitalized kind of sick. Oh, um, so you know, if, if that actor is listening, I hope that you're doing really well and I hope that you're doing better. Um, you know, but there were some last minute things that we kind of like kind of threw our timeline yeah. into a crunch because we had to recast folks at the last minute. So we didn't even start uh, recording until late last month. Oh, gosh. I think. Yeah. So that's part of why like we are in such a time crunch because, you know, I got sick and then, you know, we had some cast members get sick and. It was just like a string of bad luck for a while. And we were like, oh, my God, like, is this cursed like the town in <laughs> afflicted? <laughs> or, you know. This is feeling very self-fulfilling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, I need to be careful what I write, apparently. Mm. <laughs> so um, what's the yeah. structure? What's the plan structure? Um, like, what you really schedule for the first season? Do you know how many episodes season one is going to be? Yeah, yeah. So we're going to have 10 episodes for season one, plus kind of a bonus holiday episode that's right around um, the Christmas holiday. I think December 26th is when that one is going live. So, <laughs> um, so, so yeah, we do have that planned out. We're going mm -hmm. to be releasing every two weeks um, on Apollo Podcasts. They have like a wonderful fiction podcast app that just focuses on fiction podcasts yes. and you can buy season passes episode passes so you get ad free episodes things like that so we're releasing a week early on apollo across the board so folks can buy those episodes or buy a season pass to get mm -hmm. ad free really episodes smart. and early access um but yeah like that's the other thing is you know the early access means that we've got to get this stuff done so that's you know it's putting access. another yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so it's putting a, a little bit of a crunch on us but mm -hmm. You know, it's just, you know, it's one of those things that couldn't really be helped. And, you know, we're, we're making it work, but things are going to start to level out for us here pretty soon, I think. Mm -hmm. not, I'm going to knock on wood because yeah. I'm superstitious. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, that's a fantastic segue. Um, we have heard the first episode yes. and we loved it. Oh, yeah. And we don't want to give any spoilers, of course, but 
belief and myth and magic and family are all very core to this story. If for and and what I will say is that oh boy, do you hit the ground running <laughs> with this sucker? Like there is no I la, heard la, that wakes up and looks in the mirror and oh, oh no, shit is on. Yeah, you know, yeah, the moment. Yeah, I I tend to like throw people into the deep end of the pool with any of my writing, not not just this. This is I don't know. That's just kind of my style, I guess, probably because I have ADHD and I find it hard to focus on things that don't grab my attention right away that I tend to, you know, start with where I would want it to start because I don't want to read all of that stuff in the beginning that like sets things up well, that's a lot of times, John you know, Rogers quote, isn't it? You know, start as late as possible, finish <clears throat> as soon as quickly yeah. as possible. Just do yeah. the good stuff. And then well, these days, it's like all the commentary talk shows and Q&As are where we'll go into all the background <laughs> right. and slow burn and all of that. Yeah. Stuff. So, so yeah. what do you want to tell us about the story of the Um. Well, I will say this, that um, it won semifinalist at the Austin Film Festival's podcast scripting contest a couple of years back. And that was like an early draft of it and it's so much better than it was nice. then um you know i've gotten some i paid for some coverage because i'm also kind of shopping it as a tv series as well Good. Um, yes. so you know got some really great comments about that and you know some we'll things that i needed to, to fix <laughs> yeah um but it, it you know it definitely helped me create a stronger script i think for the first episode um so, you know, super excited about that. But, you know, I think it's probably best described as Lovecraft Country meets True Blood. You know, there's this element of cosmic horror, demonic horror, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of xenophobia <laughs> is in it. Um, but then there's also, you know, a lot of so Southern folklore, particularly Black Southern folklore. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that there's a lot of overlap between Southern folklore from white communities and Black communities. Um, you know, so a lot of, I think a lot of, white people from the South will relate to a lot of the folklore that's in there, but it's specifically what I learned growing up in my family that I thought was just superstition. But then, you know, as I was doing research later, I discovered, oh, there's a name for this and it's hoodoo. It's not just old black people superstitious stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really, really excited, particularly because, you know, this is, you know, this is a part of me um, and how I grew up and sort of a way for me to honor my heritage and heritage and share my perspective and experience growing up with the world and you know i just hope they love it too that's really one of the things that leaps out the speakers that sense of it being very grounded mm -hmm. you know this it the best way i can describe it and obviously we're going to tap dance around spoilers we're trying for really hard <laughs> to spoil um, anything <laughs> there were three or four points in that first episode where different characters were talking and my brain went there is more to that. There's more to that person. There's more to that relationship. Oh yeah. Oh it, yeah. It feels you. You talked about how you like to hit the ground running. The the thing that really marks this out for me is something very special. Is that not only do you do that, but you also never leave anybody behind. In the space of two three minutes, you get everything you need about the show, and then you turn the show on its head. And then you get the next two or three things you need to know. And, and then is. you turn the show on its head again. <laughs> That's the first episode, Tanya. I like torturing people. What yes. can I say? <laughs> I, I will say you are the first audio drama podcast, or, or yeah, audio drama podcast since that episode of St. Kilda. And people who have listened to St. Kilda will know what I mean when I say that episode, where I, I audibly went, Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and that is absolutely the reaction you want to go for. I, I'm really pleased that, 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 that you, you, you took it there. And I'm, I'm really interested in knowing, like, with that is where you've started, what are you doing next? I'm like, <laughs> yes, you, if, right? if that is your baseline emotional beat, oh my God. Yeah, there is a lot of stuff to be revealed about each of these characters. There are people who are not what they seem there are people list. who are exactly what they seem but you don't necessarily believe that that's who they are mm. um so yeah i'm a big fan of using misdirection a lot you know i think that 
um, you know, and I've taught classes on writing audio dramas. And this is one of the things that I tell people is, you know, not only do you have to think of a way to take something, because most of our brains tend to work more visually than auditorily. Mm -hmm. And so you have to take something that you're seeing in your head and figure out what is that going to sound like? And will that paint the picture in the listener's head that's in my head mm -hmm. when I'm writing? And so that's something that I really strive to do. But then the other thing that I tell them is that you have to raise a question because that makes people keep listening because you've given them a mystery that they have to know the answer to. So even, you know, when you have these slow moments where you're doing more character development and, you know, trying to get some exposition in there so people are more grounded in what's happening, there's still something to hold them through all of that so that they're interested and they don't want to skip those parts because something important might be revealed in that backstory or that, you know, seems like off the cuff conversation with characters. You need the why, the why are you yes. coming back next week? Yeah, yes. Exactly. Yeah. Your, your point about kind of educating people or co communicating to people what's going on by the, the, the kind of audio medium is something that's very close to my heart at the moment because it's a good chunk of the stuff I'm doing. And this is where I'm, I'm not only going to say very nice things about you, but where I'm going to look straight down the camera at Jen. Yes. Because... <laughs> Say them to her, too. <laughs> oh, and, and Lillian. Oh. Lillian Boyd. Oh, my God. Who, who composed our <gasps> stream music is composing the store for our flip book. And she composed the theme music, which is so 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 oh amazing. i love it like i need that it's... track now yes yes yes, yes, in yes, my playlist. yes like i just i keep listening to it and i'm like i need to i need to make this my ringtone or something oh, <laughs> <a good> idea. <laughs> it's just it's so so great and we are so lucky to have lillian and that is all jen's doing jen is the one that reached out to lillian and was like hey would you like to do this with us and <laughs> yes, exactly. yeah so and so I, that's all jen and that's one thing i love seeing is i love seeing cross-pollination between audio people yeah it's just it's just such a fantastic tight-knit community and we all pitch in and we all help and we all give ideas and we all loan you know back and forth all sorts yeah. of different shows i love that but the, yes. the, the whole nature of, of the soundscaping in the show and we were talking about this just before we went on air jen does a thing which nourished the part of my soul that is a retired stage magician and you you can talk about that that's that's not going to be spoilery because okay. we've already talked about the fact that there's earthquakes happening so cool cool Basically, there are <clears throat> one of the big things in season in the first episode is that a lot of the action takes place in two two places in town, and post earthquake, one of the places has a car alarm going off, and the thing that you and Jen do, where you use that car alarm to lead the audience around, it's one of the most subtle really pieces nice. of storytelling. I, in oh, that was all Jen. I had nothing to do with that. That was all Jen. So I just want to make sure that Jen but is cool. getting full credit for that. <laughs> jump between a couple of different characters in a couple of different locations as this crisis event is occurring and the direction and the position of that alarm going tells off you where you are. tells you where you are and it's just this fantastic i mean it is audible but it's subconscious way of grounding <coughs> yourself and i i really like that in particular with something with the horror element or in this case in this particular case it's slightly more crisis than horror right so far yeah but it, is, <laughs> but it is very silent hill right if you've ever played the original silent hill games it's all about where is the static coming from and where is that alarm yeah. and how do i orient myself towards you know the monsters i have to fight and so calling back to that you know point of audible reference is just really nicely done yeah, Jen is amazing. Absolutely yes, Jen, yes, Jen, amazing. You are. Amazing. I'm so lucky to have her. And I, I've said this before, you know, in interviews that I've done with you guys and in other places, but like even Nightlight wouldn't exist without Jen because I have like a jacked up elbow and I was doing all of the sound design really badly, honestly, if I'm going to tell the truth, because I didn't know what I was doing. You know, this was, I just, again, jumped into the deep end and I realized like my elbow could not handle all of the clicking that has to happen with sound design and so i had a really hard decision to make you know i wanted to pay everybody for their labor but i could not afford to pay a sound designer and you know i thought i'm gonna have to stop this because i physically am not capable of doing it 
And so I just posted on Twitter, like, is anybody willing to volunteer for sound design? You know, and I even offered to teach like, you know, the the meager amount that I knew, you know, to help people get started, you know, in exchange for payment. And I mean, Jen came in and already knew what she was doing. You know, I didn't need to teach her anything. She just wanted to be a part of something that she felt was, you know, like, to, you know, like you were saying, a, a voice of, or, or the, what's the word? I can't remember what you said, Alistair. Force of good. There we Force go. Force of good. Yeah. <laughs> COVID brain fog is still like, it's still killing me, but but yeah, she just wanted to be a force for good in the world. And so she joined Nightlight and kept it alive. So like, I honestly owe her so, so much that I will never, ever be able to repay her. So please, everyone that is in chat or whatever, like just show Jen some love because Absolutely. Jen has Jen, done amazing work. And Jen has done a lot of things in the genre fiction community over time. And I I know Jen that we met in Ireland, in Dublin, and you know, we had a good chat about what was working for you with that time in your life and what wasn't. And I'm really excited to see that, you know, the direction you wanted to pivot with your skills has been so goddamn successful, to be honest. And I, I love watching you on Twitter because you're always like, you're always talking about how you're having such a good time. And it really shows the work is phenomenal and afflicted. And I can't wait for everybody in the chat to get a chance. To, Dr. To Loop on the this. chat has just perfectly described sound design as like sound Lego. And and that's exact, yes. exactly what it is. You, you, you build, build environments. Out of sound. And it's truly the art when it comes to audio drama, right? Because yes. it's much of what we do and you do with Nightlight is about prose and the translation of prose and how to honor and center the text in a way that sometimes sound design can take away from if it's done hack handedly. Mm -hmm. But with audio drama, it's that full layer cake. It is Yeah, you have to have it. Sound. It's as much of a story as like if you're watching a movie, the visuals are as much of the story as the dialogue and with audio drama, audio is as much of the story as the words that I write. Like honestly, like I told Jen this, you know, like when she first sent me the drafts for the different scenes as she was putting them together. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, I hate my writing. Like this sounds so great. My writing isn't like up to par with your sound design. And she was like, shut up. That's not true. <laughs> and it's so funny. Like once we got the scored version from Lillian, I was like really scared. Like once I heard the scored version, I thought that I was super going to hate everything that I wrote. Now, you know, you have to remember at this point too, like I'd read this script and listened to it dozens and dozens of yeah. times like for, for sick of these words and, yeah. you yeah, know exactly. but when i heard the final scored version like all of it together i was like wow i'm actually a decent writer like this is kind of cool <laughs> i'm so happy that you had that experience yes good because that yes. distance is so hard for folks who do what we do to get that yeah. moment where you hear your words as something other than what you've spent months or years pulling out of yeah. And you hear it in your head when you're writing it. Yeah. It sounds different than people might perform it. Mm -hmm. And that was something that, you know, I really struggled with with Nightlight in the beginning and especially with Afflicted. You know, we do table reads for Afflicted where we get all of the cast together and we go through the script together and they re we record live essentially, you know, over Zoom. Oh, love to. And, yep. and, it, I mean, and it's so wonderful because the actors can play off of each other a little bit better. But a lot of times, you know, they would say lines different than what I was hearing them in my head. And I had such a hard time not saying, oh, do it this way instead. And just trusting that they're actors, they know what they're doing, you know, and unless it's like way off and not conveying what I need to be conveyed with that line, that I should just keep my mouth shut and trust the professionals to do what they do. And you learn and viscerally the difference between the role of the writer and the role of the director and the role yes. of the performer when you wear yes. those multiple hats. It's like, yeah, it's so hard to divorce directing and writing. Like when you do both, it is so, so hard and I'm getting better at it. You know, it's been, <laughs> it's definitely been one of those things where I've wanted to say something a lot of times, but knew that I shouldn't <laughs> say something. Mm. Um, and honestly, like, you know, I've got tattoos and one of the things that I've learned over the years getting tattoos is that if I go to an artist and I tell them I want you to do it exactly this way don't stray I don't get I don't get their best work if I go in and I say this is what I'm going for this is the feel that I'm yep. going for like this tattoo here it's kind of weird it's it's a tarot card the yeah. tower um 
And I got it because the tower in tarot represents like basically a complete destruction of whatever's going on in your life. But the flip side of that is that it's also an opportunity to rebuild. Right. And one of my favorite quotes is it's always darkest before the dawn. And so what I had them do was put dusk and dawn on the tattoo instead of the tower, you know, oh, since that's the that's card cool. that it's for. So like when it's, you know, this way, it's the, the figures are ascending and it's dawn. And then when it's this way, you know, things are not so great and it's dusk and that's all i did is i was like i want this tarot card and i want dusk and dawn you guys run with it and they kind of like piece together various tarot cards that would work well on a tattoo instead of trying to make something work that wouldn't work well with a needle and i'm like so so happy with it and it's because i got out of their way and trusted my artist to do and fulfill this envision this vision that i had shared but that with is him. anthema to the instinct of the writer who is yes. part, so many people are writers because they have ultimate control over every yes. single yeah. element. Especially if you write story. books and things like right. that. It's very different. Like when I wrote my novella, like nobody was telling me you can't do this or, you know, the budget is going to be a problem here. You know, you don't have to worry about any of that. You can just write what you want when you're writing a book or a short story. But when you're producing something, you know, whether that's for TV, film, audio, a web series, whatever, you have to think about things like, you know, what is the budget for this? You know, how am I going to make this work within these restrictions mm -hmm. that I have? And so I'm learning so much about directing and producing, doing this audio drama. Um, and I think, I, I hope, <laughs> I hope my cast thinks that I'm a good director. <laughs> um, they haven't complained yet, but I don't know if they would complain but you know i have gotten a lot of really good feedback especially about the writing mm. from the cast so i feel like overall the cast is pretty happy with me um you know i definitely you know again this is i don't want to say it's my first directing gig because i do direct to some extent with nightlight you know we have narrators and oh. if i want them to reread a line in but a story things like that but it's it? so different than you know individual lines and individual characters and making sure that the stuff that's in my head about this character that they don't know yet because they haven't read, you know, all of the episodes to know, oh, we're going to reveal that this character is really X. They don't know that yet. Yep. So I have to coach them in my directing and say, I need you to say it this way because what's really happening is this right. thing that would spoil things. So I'm not going to be specific there, but exactly, exactly. But, so yeah, but it's a wonderful experience. I love directing. I, I honestly wasn't sure if I would love it mm. or not, but I do. I do. I think that, that people tend to fall into two categories where they either want to stick solely with a, a one individual role and then they trust people and find people to collaborate with others. Or, you know, there are people who, who just want to do it all and are able to switch the modes that the different roles require. Yeah. Well, I'm learning that I don't want to do it all, though. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I just feel <laughs> filthy yes. sleep robs me of hours of the day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So. We are coming up on a good spot for an ad break here, folks. So we are going to, um, so if you are not a supporter of the channel, you're going to get an ad for a couple minutes here shortly. This is, you don't have to do anything. By all means, just leave the window open, get yourself a snack, get a drink of water, stand up, stretch, you know. Get you a Shiner Bach. Get you made in beer. Texas. See, <laughs> see if anybody in your household needs a snack or a medication or needs to go to bed or all that good stuff. And then we will be back to talk to Tanya some more because we noticed something in the closing credits of the first episode that um, we're going to come back and talk about. All right. So <laughs> I'm going to click the magic button that makes the ad run. So some of you will join us in a couple of minutes. And for the rest of us, um, we'll find something else to talk about. We're still getting used to this. So <laughs> here we go. We'll be right back. So... I'm having so much fun. This I'm is so glad. great. I'm glad I love you guys so much. We love you too, buddy. It's, I'm so it's glad so good you were to see you. To it's so good to see you too. I, I saw Marguerite, you know, we were talking a few weeks ago. Yeah. Um, we can talk more about that offline. Obviously, like I went ahead and, you know, did the thing. You you were out in Italy. I was like, I'm not going to bother you. Everything's good, you know. Oh, we're going to talk about the thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Just so you know, we are still on the channel. We're yes. Still yeah. Live, so you, yeah. You yeah, so I'm not saying and anything. And all that good stuff. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, but I do appreciate your help with that. And I wanted I wanted to let you know, I keep meaning to email you to like let you know like what happened. But well, I kind of figured 
figured out what happened when I, I, I mean you're smart down. I'd say so. you have figured out that you did but you know I wanted to be the one to tell you it's just I was so busy with production and I was not the one to tell you I hate I hate not being the one to tell people things and having you know having them figure out you know some other way like I knew you weren't going to be upset or anything I just I'm just the type of person that I'm terrible with communication but I want to be good at communication and that gap fucks me up every time it's okay. <laughs> It, it's totally okay so so this is the one of the first times we're we're running these ad breaks like with us live we did them on sunday um with very artificially when we on sundays we just do very casual gaming mm -hmm. streaming um and stitch here is telling us the trick to ad breaks is to find something intriguing to come back from the ads mid-sentence and out of context oh so, so we'll have to do something and like and cursed by a lava or something <laughs> <laughs> I now have a terrible confession. I, one of my many, many go-to gags is absolutely a rip of that. There is an episode of My Name is Earl where he, one of the things he repents for is uh, a university lecture that he disrupted. And you get a montage of him delivering this lecture. And in the middle of this heroic stirring music, they turn the audio up and all he says is, and that's how I found out Ginsu knives can cut through human bone. Let's move on. <laughs> I think you 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 used that in Witching More Hour, didn't than you? Once, oh yes. yeah. I don't know if, if I, I don't know if you, everybody in the chat knows this, but I edit the full lid, obviously, is our award nominated newsletter. And I like have a list now of things Alistair's not allowed to say anymore or that get automatically edited out. He has a couple of like go to phrases or like analogy styles that I'm like, no, try again. Nope, you've used that three Ooh. times this this ad. You can't. You know, the nope. no context thing we could talk about is I'm working on writing a book about monster biology. So we could talk about um, stomach capacity and blood. Like you can't drain a body. What do you I, mean you can't? I fully have the drink, mightiest of needs. Like you can't fully drain <laughs> a body or like you've calculated how big your stomach has to be in order to drain all the blood. Yes. We are at 10 seconds yes. before we come back. So this That's is a fine. very yes. good and no I'm context. Very, yeah, yes. This is a very good no context guess. And then I yes. saw Sarah Gailey talking about this. So, all oh, right. Oh yeah, yeah, I think there has talked How about it, yeah. How much blood do you have to drain from a monster? How big does a monster stomach capacity have to be to drain a human body? A human body has about five liters total of blood. Our stomach capacities are about two to two and a half liters, unless you are a binge eater, and then you might have up to like four. Mm -hmm. So basically what happens if you were to drain an entire body of its blood volume, you would have like the worst stomach ache ever until you threw it all up because your stomach could not physically stretch to hold it all unless you had practiced, <laughs> you know, like, like um, competitive eaters, you know, obviously like they do stuff to stretch their stomach out so that they can consume massive quantities of food. So yeah. competitive eaters would make very good vampires, but people like you and I would make terrible vampires because we would not be able to drain bodies and then we'd have living victims everywhere. And that just and, seems like a recipe for disaster. And there's just no Tupperware large enough for that. No, 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 there's not. You know, they should really make, you know, oversized thermoses. Like, how cool would that be? Keep your blood warm. Aren't those trendy right now? Like, aren't influencers carrying, like, gallon-sized gym bottles these days? They are. Yeah, we you know what? They are. Ones, yeah, we just need to make them insulated. The gym, right? You know, we could corner the vampire market with this. I feel like there's a mighty need for a way to keep blood warm. <laughs> So apparently we succeeded because the first comment we see is, wow, this was certainly a place to come back from the ass. Thank, Thank you very you. much, yes. Dr. Lee. That was the goal. Good. Ex yeah, a huge Nailed thermos it. would be very heavy, however. That's true. A what would be very heavy? A huge thermos would be very heavy. Yes, like yes, it would be very heavy. But think yeah. of the stickers you could cover it with. Yes, yeah. honey, you would in fact cover it with a bazillion, trillion, zillion stickers. It's I like, will have yeah. you know, that before we went on vacation, we had to get a new suitcase because one of our suitcases was broken. And I was just like, oh, sticker real estate. So a suitcase with the travel is not advised sticker from White Vaults and with the okay. lonely tarot card sticker went with us to Italy and was still on the case when we got back. I was very impressed. I like it. I need a new suitcase because my wheels are falling apart and I just know I'm going to be wheeling around the airport at some point and it's going to break and then I'm going to have to carry that motherfucker and I'm going to be mad about it. Yes. <laughs> it happened to me when I left York. <laughs> 
literally when I got oh. on the on the train to start my new life, the suitcase that my parents had bought for me the day before came out of the back of their car. The one half of one of the back wheels shattered, and four thousand miles later, I was able to stop dragging it. Oh, oh that's yeah, the that's the worst. Oh yeah. I need fan art of Vampire Alistair's blood thermos covered in stickers. Yes, yes. that has to yeah. happen. So got blood. Oh. Yes, it's not <laughs> yours though. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a very interesting name yeah, as executive do. producer in the end credits for the first episode of Afflicted. You want to talk a little bit about that? Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm an executive producer. I'm so slow right now. I'm sorry. The COVID brain fog is... It's mm. okay. You take all the time me. you need. Yes. Yes. There is a very interesting name um, as executive producer for um, the first episode. Um, just, you know, someone that some people may have heard of called Mike Flanagan. Um, that you know. Mike <laughs> Flanagan? Yeah, you know, Haunting of Hill House, Haunting of Bly Manor, The Midnight Club, Oculus. Like, oh, he is my favorite director of all time. And Tell us all few... about this. Oh, I, I got you. Oh, yeah, let's do this. So, <laughs> a few years ago, and I don't, I honestly don't remember how this happened because I'm pretty sure that it happened like in the middle of my divorce. And there's just a lot that's murky from then. Like, I don't have a lot of no, memories from yeah. that time. Um, and I just remember one day seeing an email that was like, Mike Flanagan is now a patron. And I was like, there's no way that it's the Mike Flanagan. Like, I'm going to go look and see, you know, like where they live, you know, what the email address is. Like, is this just somebody? No, it was him. And I was like, holy <gasps> shit. And like ran and told my kid. And he was like, you know, who's that? Because of course, you know, he doesn't. Want much. I don't, I don't who's know. that? <laughs> Oculus is one of my favorite movies. <laughs> And he's heard he's heard me talk about Mike Flanagan before, but you know, of course, he didn't have you know he didn't. Re I mean, he was a kid. Like he's not like let me remember that name, you know. Mm -hmm. Um. So I told him and you know explained who it was, and he got really excited, and you know we jumped around and celebrated, and like I started crying because I was so happy because you know my luck had been like super terrible. Yeah. Up until that point, and I was like, oh my god, I can't believe like Mike Flanagan is a patron for Nightlight. And then, um, you know, a few years down the road, I post this uh, crowdfunding campaign for Afflicted, and he was one of our first donors, and he donated at the max level that I had at the time, which was 500, and then, like, I had a few other people donating at 500, so I said, I wonder what happens if I put 1,000, um, and that's when I gave people executive producer credits if they did 1,000, so he actually did a second um, donation, so, like, even well more done. than this. Yeah, and... I mean, I was just like, I was so floored by it because, you know, I look up to him so, so, so much. And for him to, you know, I don't, I don't want to put words in his mouth or, or anything like that, but obviously he sees something in what I'm doing and wants to support it. Otherwise he wouldn't be throwing money exactly. at it. And to have his vote of confidence, even if I, you know, fall short of his expectations, is still like it's such a proud moment for me for someone that does work of that caliber to think that I am worthy of financial support. Like that's right. it's just you know it's it's flooring. And um, Jamie, who is uh, Mike's sibling, and wrote on Midnight Mass, mm -hmm. uh, which is you know one of my favorite <laughs> shows. Well, of all. can be in everything. That's okay. Yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. yes. But Jamie, Jamie is so great. I met them at Stoker, and it's so funny because oh, nice. I went to StokerCon, and um, the very first panel there. StokerCon is a big annual horror convention. It's yes. mostly focused on pros, but it has made a conscious effort in the last several years to incorporate more and more people like yeah. audio drama and film. And I think we'll see a lot more of that. John Lawson is now president, mm. and I know that he cares very much about expanding into other areas um but yeah so you know the, the first panel that i went to I was like i'm gonna get there early because i want to introduce myself to jamie because i you know loved jamie's work in midnight mass and you know so i walked up to them and i just said you know hi i'm tanya i just wanted to say that you know i really loved your work in midnight mass and you know i can't remember everything else i said because i was you know fangirling but trying not to <laughs> be Sorry. cool man be cool and then jamie goes i love your work too and like my legs literally got weak and oh. I had to like pretend that I was doing a happy dance. 
like, I'm just leaving here to look cool and not because I'm going to fall over. I'm just dancing, yeah. I'm just dancing. I'm not falling. <laughs> then he was like, you know, do you want to, you know, do you want to go for some drinks after the panel? And I was like, wait, what? You know, and of course, like, you know, it was other people that they were inviting as well. And so, you know, me and Jamie and a couple of other people went down uh, to the hotel bar and had some drinks. And all of them were among the first supporters for Afflicted. Aww. And if you if you pay attention to the season or to the episodes, it's not in the first episode, but in the second episode, their names are both mentioned. Um, you know, it's just like secondary characters, you know, kind of thing, just as a nod to, you know, thank you for, you know, being the first and not just being this one of the first supporters, but obviously spreading the word. Yes. And, and that's yes. one of the, you know, we all have different experiences in different communities and different audiences. And when they, when they cross pollinate, there's so much power to be had. And, and it's really empowering as creators to see that <clears throat> effect be leveraged on our yeah. behalf. Yeah. And for Jamie, like, you know, he, I've shared some of my writing with Jamie, you know, I've texted with them, you know, saying, you know, hey, like, this is something that I have going on. Like, is this a good thing? You know, should I watch out for this kind of thing? You know, like, honestly, I consider them a friend at this point. Oh, and, sweet. you know, they said that they consider me a friend, yeah. which is like so wild to me. <laughs> you, know, you know, but you know, like, we, you know, it's you wonderful know, we, though. Celebrity is a weird thing, right? Because you know, yeah. we just ascribe all these characteristics to these people when when they become famous. Is like, oh, you you do not walk among your morals, and you know there are a lot of people in recent history um, <laughs> who, who do horrible, <laughs> terrible things with fame, but they're still just people. And it, yeah. I I always love hearing stories about creators that you know you really respect, not just because of the work that they create but that the way they conduct themselves and the way they remain human beings when there's yes. so much motivation and so much money and draw to and like not yes. to not be yes. a human right. being and yeah. to turn into garbage people publicly yes. and drag others with you yeah yes you know? yeah i mean jamie won the stoker for the episode of midnight mass and you know they go up there to give the acceptance speech and like the first thing that they say is you know, this isn't just my award. It also belongs to, and, you know, listed a couple of other people mm -hmm. that wrote on that episode, you know? So, I mean, just <sighs> Jamie is such a humble person who is amazing at what they do and have, you know, every right, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, to not be as humble as they are, but, but they are. And I just, I, I love them so, so much. And I'm so thankful for Jamie's support. I'm so thankful for Mike's support um, you know, there's been a few other people as well, like um, Justina Ireland, who oh, yeah, yeah. also donated the very first story that we had for Nightlight. You know, I just I put out a remember. call like, yeah. hey, I need stories and I'm paying, you know, who wants to send me a story? Because I belong to like a black writers group. And Justina was like, I think I got something for you and I can make it in the Dread Nation world. And I was like, oh, my God, that would be amazing. So like coming out of the gate with, you know, a best selling author giving you a story in the universe of their best-selling novel is like that was that was huge i think that that gave you know a big bump to nightlight so i cannot i cannot express how thankful i am for the support that i've gotten from people in the community who are further along their career path than i am because you know they are definitely you know reaching back and helping pull people up and you know it's definitely set an example for me to do the same and i really try when i see someone who's just getting started to help bring them along with me as much as I can. Yeah. Speaking that of Justina so cool. Ireland, Dread Nation is a fantastic, there's two of them now, maybe there's yes, Yeah, there yeah, there's a so. Deathless Divide, which I know is yeah. on my bookshelf. Oh, yeah, hold on, everything's backwards, right there. <laughs> <laughs> but that is a Civil War era set zombie book. Is yes. It not? So yes. are you picking yes, up on my segue here for you? Yes. Talk to me about <laughs> black writers and zombies. Oh, man. Okay. So I grew up with stories, not about the zombies that eat brains, but zombies that were resurrected, essentially, by necromancers for either. That's not what the Black community calls them, but necromancers. Um, and it essentially enslaves them to do their bidding. 
And it comes a lot from Haitian folklore and obviously like a fear of enslavement, even after you've died, that you still aren't free, even dead. And my dad told me those stories growing up. You know, he had a friend of a friend of a friend, you know, or cousin, mm -hmm. you know, somebody that knew somebody that knew somebody who died. And then they saw them, you know, like 10 years later, you know, wandering down the street or working in a field and um, had to save them. And, you know, one of the big things in the black community, um, you know, if you've ever heard a black person say, who's got the body, you know, after someone dies, they're asking that because they want to know which funeral home is going to be taking care of the body because it is a big fear in the black community, not just because, makeup is a concern <laughs> you know like there are a lot of um there are a lot of folks in the funerary industry who just don't know how to do makeup on black people and so then it ends up looking unnatural but then there's also this sort of you know leftover superstition and you know it's still very much alive for some people that if you send your body to the wrong funeral home it can end up in the wrong hands and then you become enslaved in death there's so you know just like this whole history of medical samples and studies being conducted on black bodies without consent without knowledge i mean there's a famous mm -hmm. there's a like a famous vaccine and i can't remember which one it is off the top of my head that was developed almost exclusively from cells taken from one black woman whose family yeah never henrietta gave, lack yeah, yeah. never gave permission for this yeah 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 oh yeah there there's a lot of fuckery <laughs> involved fuckery. with with black bodies. And, you know, I think, you know, especially for afflicted and, you know, my novella risen deals a lot with that sort of thing. Um, and like I said, it was a big fear of my dad's, you know, he, he wanted to make sure that, you know, when he passed on that we sent him to the funeral home that he wanted to go to, because it was something that he was legitimately afraid could happen to him. Um, you know, so I think that there's this, you know, sort of dichotomy in the black community about zombies. There's the, you know, traditional, you know, our, you know, we're going to eat your brains, Walking Dead Romero kind of zombies, um, which is what Dread Nation kind of deals with. But it takes in that racial aspect of yes. black people essentially being used as cannon fodder to fight these mm -hmm. zombies. And then you've got, you know, this other aspect that is, I'm afraid that even in death, I won't be free sort of thing. And I think both are worth exploring and both there there's definitely an amalgamation of both of them mm -hmm. in afflicted. Mm -hmm. And then there's an anthology you're working on as well. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So um, I'm working with Nicole Givens Kurtz on an anthology called black and roots, which is non-traditional stories of the undead from, from the African diaspora. So it's all non Romero kind of zombies. It's uh, very much African folklore kind of zombies, not to say that there aren't some zombies that might eat brains and things like that, but it's definitely, you know, the authors in this anthology are taking this trope of zombies that just eat your brains and turning it on its head. I'm looking at the, right. so I've pulled up your crowdfunding page and I'm looking at author lists. I'm like, that is a hell of a TLC. <laughs> Sheree Renee Thomas, Eden Royce, Zinn Rocklin. Rockland. I'm like, oh, these are all amazing, fantastic authors. And these are just the ones that I personally have experience with. Yeah, yeah, it's we got so lucky. <laughs> there is some fantastic talent here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We're very, 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 especially Sheree Renee Thomas. You know, we Nicole and I were talking about like, should we ask Sheree? Because like we know that she's busy with everything. Like yeah. I think Sheree is probably busier than I am, which is saying a lot. <laughs> oh dear God, that poor woman. <laughs> um, you know, so we were like, you know, should we even ask? You know, we don't want her to feel like she's got to do it. And, you know, finally we were like, you know what? Like, she'll say no if she can't do it. Exactly. You know, like she's the type of person that would say no. And so we asked and she agreed and we were like, wow, we didn't expect that. That's amazing. Um, and then I got to interview at Multiverse um, yeah. a couple of weeks or last week. I, time time doesn't really exist Eight for me anymore. It was a while back. Yeah. yeah. Like it was 17th, 16th, 17th. Um, of this month I got to, she was a guest of honor at multiverse and they asked me to interview her and I was like wow this is an amazing honor I just hope that I can do her justice <laughs> and it, you know it, it turned out well you know she was she was happy with you know the questions that I asked her and great. it was it was just it was a great moment it was it was such an honor to be able to be the one to interview her I don't think I've ever met her um but 
she's you, just you, such you, a You have force. been awestruck from afar on several Very occasions. much so. Yeah. And just her presence is just like, I don't know, like just being in a room with her just makes you feel like at ease. And mm -hmm. I don't know, I mean, like she's just got such great energy that I feel like if we could bottle it up, most of the problems in the world <laughs> would go away because we would all just be chill. Oh. And, you know, that's so. fantastic. Oh, excuse yeah. me. Um, so I want to pivot just a little bit to talk about kind of like businessy sorts of things because that's my right. vibe, yo. <laughs> so you made the decision to join a network recently. I did, and, yes. And you joined Rusty Quill. Um, I did, Not yes. just Afflicted, which is releasing on Monday, but with Nightlight. Yes. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, I would love to. Um, you know, I've been exploring joining a network for almost a year now. Um, I started at the beginning of the year thinking... I need to start putting some feelers out, you know, see, see what my options are out there. Um, you know, and part of the reason that I wanted to do it is with Nightlight, almost all of the money that I get from patrons goes to paying our narrators, our authors, our sound designers, and then of course expenses involved in running the podcast. So mm -hmm. things like sound databases, website hosting, you know, all the things that come with running a business almost all of that money goes to that and i get like literally five cents an hour <laughs> i think is what i calculated for the work um that i do and you know for a long time i was really i did not want to do ads you know i did not want yeah. to have to do that but you know it, especially like once i put the crowd funder up for afflicted i was like i should really be paying myself for my work on nightlife, yeah, you know, right. just because oh, yeah. this is, you know, my dream and it's something that I want to do does not mean that I don't deserve to get paid for it. And so I decided to introduce ads and, you know, if people don't want to hear ads, that's totally cool. You can go buy a season pass. You can, you know, join us on Patreon and you can get ad free episodes that way. Um, but the ads essentially fund, you know, my salary, which isn't a whole lot. I think people overestimate how much a podcast can make off of ads. You know, if you're not, you know, the top podcast, you're not going to make, you know, enough to even cover all the reporting rent. And media about of it is, you know, you see these ridiculous pieces about if you're not spending $650,000 per episode of your podcast, right. then you're ripping yeah. people off. Like, yeah, and it's like, ugh. I mean, don't we wish to have that? Yes, <laughs> right. Yeah, I wish I could pay. You know, I want to give everybody involved in Nightlight and Afflicted, honestly. Like, I want to be able to pay everybody more. It's just, you know, it's one of those things where this is a very much a new medium. People aren't necessarily familiar with how much it costs mm -hmm. to produce something. You know, they just kind of assume, like, oh, well, it, you know, they're just going to read a story to us, you know, pay them like 15 bucks and, you know, they're good to go, but they don't realize how much work is involved in that, how much you have to think about what voices you want to use in different places so that people can distinguish one character from another, how you have to go through and edit out all of your bad takes. So even if it takes you, you know, it's a 30 minute story from beginning to end with clean narration, you're going to spend two hours yep. doing that. So oh, $15 yeah. for two hours worth of work is not enough money, you yeah, know, no. exactly. um, you know, sound designers, if we have a 30 minute episode, you know, it takes them 10 to 20 hours, depending on what kind of sound design has to be done to, you know, source the music and the sound effects and put all of that in and make sure that everything sounds the way that it should. Um, and then, of course, the writers deserve to be paid a professional wage for the work that they do. And, you know, all of that adds up. If I paid everybody on Nightlight a professional wage, what they should be getting paid, then I would probably be spending six to seven hundred dollars an episode at the absolute yeah. minimum. Mm -hmm. Which means and, you'd be reducing, I mean, the number of episodes you'd probably be producing would drop to one a month. Just yes because exactly that's the way it works. exactly yeah. exactly exactly so i decided to introduce ads you know one so that i could pay myself Good. and you know also so that i could kind of separate okay here's my money that i get for the work that i'm doing but then i can take all of the money that we get from the nightlight legion on patreon and i can use that to say okay i'm going to increase my pay for my authors my narrators and my sound designers um you know, I think, I think, you know, it, at least from my perspective, that seems like the best way to do it because they get paid the same no matter how many listeners the podcast gets. My job is to grow the podcast. And so my pay 
should be reflected on how many people are listening to the podcast. And that's mm-hmm. what ads do. You get paid mm-hmm. based on the number of people that listen. So, you know, we've had a few people on Patreon as soon as the ads got introduced, you know, they dropped their pledges, which, you know, I was disappointed. And, but, you know, I, I also get it. I did not think to message ahead of time of, you know, why I was doing what I was doing. So that was, you know, that was a mistake on my part. I should have, before the ads were even in place, should have said, here's what's happening. Here's what the breakdown is of how the finances are going to work. Here's why I'm doing it. And I think that that would have kind of like staunched the bleeding a little bit. Um, At this point, I think I've lost like 30 bucks a month. So not like a huge, huge amount, Um, you know, but it does, it does make, a difference yeah. you know and we're trying to get to weekly episodes for nightlight now and you know we're a long way from from making that happen we need to you know we definitely need to get more more folks and on the just, patreon just what an audience expects and accepts from yeah. a podcast has changed an awful lot since mm-hmm. you and us started in 2005 yeah you know yeah there was this fear and you know looking back on it now it was probably an intentionally inflamed fear by advertisers that you know if you advertise you're going to lose your audience which yeah. meant people wouldn't do it which meant that the ad buys were high value and low target yeah. and, and then you know the combination of hollywood getting involved and covid completely changed the landscape as far as advertising yeah. was concerned because it was the only medium that was still continuing to increase during the lockdown period. Yeah. And of course we got flooded with, well, I wrote this screenplay and I can't get anybody to film it, but I can, you know, make I can a do podcast. this podcast. How yeah. hard could that be? I have one actor right. who's been in the thing you've seen. This is, their name is going to be all over this. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. And now, you know, we're coming back down from that and we're facing, you know, a kind of global reduction in advertising spend. Um, I, I think you're right, and and I agree with you that the, the kind of the thing you talked about about if there's one thing, it, it's not that an audience demands consistency anymore; it's that they don't like to be surprised. You've yes, got to be really clear and repetitive and upfront. Upfront, and yeah. We are doing this because this, and then you know, especially the repetition because yeah. people will miss it. Like, for sure. You know, like that's common social media principle, right? If you're not talking about something three to four times a day, nobody's gonna no one's gonna notice. Your audience I've, is gonna I've get it. I've never forgotten yeah. a couple of years ago, Cameron Hurley talking about how she just finished a successful crowdfunding campaign. She talked about it three or four times a day for a month. And literally the campaign finished and the first email she got was, was from a friend going, Why didn't you tell me you were doing this? <laughs> right? And then, yeah, yeah, people are gonna miss it. Yeah. And then as as much as you post going to do what they're going to do. And you can't control yeah. for that. And you can't no. chase that anymore. You know, no. the one member of 10,000 in an audience who's going to say, well, there was a mistake in your episode this week and I'm out. Right. Like, yeah. It's yeah. like, okay, fine. Like, there's sure. nothing I can do about that. I'm not perfect. And if perfection is something that you require to chip in to help me make this, then, you know, that's okay. I'm not, I'm not for you. Good luck yeah. finding someone who is perfect. Exactly. <laughs> you know? exactly. And I mean, and it's the same thing with, you know, the people that have dropped their subscriptions since I introduced the ad, you know, like I know part of that is on me because I didn't explain ahead of time that this is what was happening. This mm-hmm. is why I'm doing it, you know, and I don't know if that would have changed their mind or not. You know, I, I don't know what was going on in their head, but you know, I'm not mad at them for deleting their pledges or you know anything like that like that that that's fine that you know it's it's their choice you know it could be that they had something else going on and it just coincided Mm -hmm. with the whole ad thing you know but at the end of the day when I was going through my divorce um I posted you know I didn't give a lot of details I just said you know hey I'm going through a really messy divorce right now and I don't have the mental capacity to create new episodes. I totally understand if you want to pause your subscriptions or delete your pledges. I'm not going to be offended. You know, it's it's totally okay because I'm not giving you what I said that I was going to give you. And I was super surprised that two people deleted their pledges during that time. And I didn't produce anything for, I think, six, maybe nine months mm. because of that. And people stuck with me during that time and honestly like you know because because of everything that was happening because this also happened to coincide with the pandemic and i lost my job 
like it was great that those people didn't drop off because it helped me pay my bills you know and and i hate that i didn't it still bothers me to this day that i did not give them anything in exchange for the pledges Wait, we that didn't they want anything in exchange for your pledges. you know and that and that's what people keep saying uh, you know and i'm trying to make peace with that you know that they had a choice and if they did not want to support me at that time i wouldn't have been upset i would have been totally okay with it but they chose to and you know i think that that's the other thing that that a lot of people don't realize is yes consistency is important but transparency i think is far more important than consistency and, yes. and communication yes can absolutely make up for consistency yeah yeah, because when I got COVID, you know, I said, hey, like, I can give you guys four episodes in October, or I can give you two in October and two in December, but I can't do two in September and four in October like we normally do because I've got COVID, <laughs> you know. Exactly. Um, and, you know, there were a couple of people that dropped their pledges, you know, during September, which, you know, again, is fine. Like, I wasn't giving what I promised. Like, that's totally totally okay you know i'm not i'm not mad about it um but because i was transparent about it you know i had a lot of people saying like take care of yourself you are more important than this podcast yes, and 100 percent. <laughs> and i have such great supporters and fans like people who actually genuinely care about me and don't want me to kill myself to entertain them which is like huge because you know there's this song by um halsey called gasoline and one of the lyrics is, um, do you tear yourself apart to entertain like me? And I cannot tell you how many times I really vibe with that <laughs> lyric because, right. you know, I am tearing myself apart to entertain people, whether that's, you know, overworking myself, which I need to be better about. Like, that's me. That's on me. But then there's also the part of writing where you're revealing the deepest parts of yourself and You're that can be really scary yeah it's very vulnerable so you know there are different ways that you tear yourself apart to entertain people and you know whether my supporters recognize that or not they've the the vast majority have stuck with me for the long term and i i just i'm i could not be more thankful for their support you including also, you guys <laughs> you also deserve it i mean you do oh, thank you I think we as creators have been trained by capitalism to expect a transactional relationship. Yes. I yes. make a thing, you pay me for a thing. Yes, that's how my brain's programmed. And and I, and I know think, it is. <laughs> and know? I think things like Patreon have started to give us the vocabulary and the mechanisms to realize, you know, we want to support you and your potential yeah. Yeah. more than we want to engage in a transaction for your creative output. Yeah. And that's something that I'm starting to learn because I came into this seeing it as a transactional relationship, but my supporters, the vast majority of them don't see it as a transactional oh, yeah. yep. relationship. Absolutely. That, and that's something which I think Marguerite makes a very good point. That's something which is very much coming in with this second tier evolution crowdfund. Uh, or just, you know, just an evolution of how art is something that we engage with and foster and make space for in our lives and our attention. I mean, yeah. decide that we're going to support art regardless of you know the specificity of its output like way back in the day this is how old i am jonathan mm -hmm. colton talked about the, the thousand true fans right the idea that if you was an artist had a thousand people who would basically buy anything you produced whenever you produced it that was the basis of a career you could right you've right made now. it at that point yeah yeah exactly yeah and i'm a long way from there <laughs> you and I'm working both, on man. It. <laughs> I mean, most of us all and but then you start talking about things like you know the reason why books are priced at 10 bucks and the reason why people want to pay 10 bucks for a season pass is because television you know buying a dvd is 20 bucks but the yeah. reason you can buy a dvd for 20 bucks is that the studio knows they're going to sell several million of them Right. And that that scale doesn't translate when you're an indie creator who's maybe going to sell a thousand. 
No. And, and this again, brings up this yeah, brings go up a good point because I'm on the organizing committee um, for the Writers Guild Association Audio Alliance. Oh, yeah. And I'm the co-chair for the Indie Fiction Committee. And one of the things that we are working on right now is classifying different types of indie fiction based on the budget, based on, you know, who you have in place, who's funding you and saying, here are fair rates to pay for this budget if, you know, it's self-funded versus oh, like corporate funded. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please, please. Yes, I mean, please, you can join, talk. you can join as well if you want to join the organizing committee or the indie fiction committee or both, you know. I speak committee. Um, we I, would I, absolutely I love to have you. But that, but that's something that I think is missing right now from the podcast world is it's, you know, still very much the wild west. No one knows what to pay people. And, and, you know, I see so... people paying actors and sound designers the same and, and actors, you know, yes, their work is important, but they're going to spend a fraction of the time that a sound designer exactly. is going and to spend. So and that stratified. pay to be equal is wrong. And it's yeah. so stratified because, I mean, it's like fiction. And it's why I think there are so many, I hate to say this, but there are so many synergies <laughs> between genre fiction publishing and audio drama because you yes. have that same aspect of stratification the there are bestsellers and there are hollywood backed shows and they have entirely different pressures demands pay scales mm -hmm. and expectations from yes. indie creators you know and even in indie creators you have successful established shows like rusty quill network you know like white vault you know like old gods yeah, Magnus right. Archives, which right. is you know exactly yeah. very different scale from something like this is my first podcast and I've never done this before and I'm doing a one shot and right. I have no idea what to do. So a project that tries to to speak to those differences in in a and so much of the conversation about this gets into the word should you know you yeah. should do this you have to do this it's like if I did that. I could produce 12 minutes of audio. And that's <laughs> right? right. And, and there's yeah. something to be said to, I mean, one of the things I absolutely love about Mike Flanagan is he's a guy who knows how to take a limitation and leverage it into a, a creative strength and yes. how to turn that into an asset. But this kind of project where you're talking about it from a very neutral value perspective, from a, this is your reality this is what we think is feasible in your reality. This is your starting point. Right. I, I think you're right. Something we, especially in the indie space, where just the leverages of scale are so different, could really yes. be useful. And yeah, you know, and it in, it's one of those things that lowers barriers. Yes. We are good friends with uh, someone who's putting together their very first show, and you know one of the things they struggled with was where do I get realistic information about how to say what my price, you know, what I'm offering, what's realistic, mm -hmm. what do I base my crowdfunding budget on? Yeah. And you know, there aren't a lot of good, like properly vetted comparators available. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's part of what we're trying to do, you know, because, you know, SAG has their, you know, standard rates for yeah. podcast production and things like that. But that's that's out of reach for a lot of folks who are, you know, indie productions. Like, yes, most people would love to pay people exactly what they should be getting because we know what it's like to be underpaid. You know, most of us know what it's like to be underpaid. But we can't in our lives. 12 minutes of audio drama at that budget. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you've got five hundred dollars, you know, like you've got to. You're going to do like five minutes, if that, you know, that there's just, it's. Well, we spent our whole somewhere. budget on the promo. Okay. <laughs> right. right. We got a theme song, you know, kind exactly. of thing. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's so, it's so difficult. And even, I mean, we raised almost 20 grand for Afflicted. And, you know, in my opinion, you know, Jen is still not getting paid enough for the work that she's doing. I would love to pay our actors more. Mm. Um, I would love to pay Lillian more you know so our goal next year is going to be a little bit higher you know i'm hoping that after people have heard the show people will be more inclined to chip in a little bit more you know because yes people had heard of jen and i before this fundraiser it's not like we were complete strangers but you know this is also like a brand new 
series. So people are going to be a little more reluctant to give money to something that they haven't we necessarily heard before. Hour about funding season one. Versus yes. Versus two, three. Two. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. It's such a different proposition. Yeah. We have been talking almost an hour and a half. I love it. I know. I could <laughs> just probably do this forever. And it's, yes. we missed you. We haven't gotten to catch up with you in forever. I know. Been it busy. has been forever. Been busy and it's yeah. just been so nice to have a chance to just chat and catch up. Yeah. Yeah. It's been great. It's okay. been, this has been so much fun. You guys have had amazing questions too. Oh, and Alice, there's almost made me cry a few times, which is you know, very good at that. Terrible <laughs> for my reputation. As a <laughs> but, okay. So we are going to flood the chat with a whole series of links and Tanya's going to give us a rundown again on where you can find all the good stuff. All right. All right. Let's do it. Okay. I can't see the chat from where I it's am. Okay. So we've got links for but... afflicted. Nightlight okay. and your Twitter account for sure. Um, okay. I think our stream mods will put the link to the Blackened Roots anthology crowdfunder yep. in there again as well. I do not have a button, Jen. Which is exactly. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hey, <laughs> thank so, you. So Afflicted is out on Monday. Halloween. Yes, yes. Um, public release will be on Monday. Um, I think we're going to do 7 a.m. release at 7 a.m. Central, just like we do. Um, for nightlight so it's still kind of early enough for the folks overseas yeah, to catch it on their commute home okay. or you know late lunch something like that um you know but it's not so early in the day that you know people are listening to it before yeah. halloween um we're gonna have a virtual launch party for our supporters on sunday which i'm really really excited I'm about, scared about. <laughs> as well yes thank you yeah um yeah so we're gonna play the first episode in the mob lucky q a afterwards Sweet. which i'm excited about um let's see what else you can find me on twitter instagram and tiktok even though i don't do anything on tiktok right now at mystifying m-i-s-s-d-e-f-y-i-n-g -S 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 i know i just need time <laughs> i know God, that's the that's the hard we part get and the busier we get the more we realize that time is the most precious resource yes so so precious um yeah, you can find Nightlight at Nightlight Pod on Twitter or Instagram. You can find Afflicted at Afflicted Audio on Twitter. We're on Instagram, but we don't really post there because Jen and I are both like Instagram. <laughs> I have a tool um, for you. We'll talk about it at the break, okay? I need, you know, and the thing is, like, they changed their algorithm, I guess, you know, a year or two ago. And, you know, I've noticed, you know, like, just the views for a lot of my posts went down. So it's just kind of like, I'm not getting a lot out of posting on Instagram. And, you know, part of it is that I'm not putting a lot into it anymore. But how many things um, can you put a lot into anymore all at once? Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. And, you know, I'm really trying to corral some of that in so that I'm focusing on the places that I am most effective, which right now is Twitter. That's yeah. where I have, you know, my biggest audience well, and I tell the Twitter Friday, stories. Right? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We'll um, see. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I, I don't know what's going to happen after musk takes over but you know we'll we'll cross that bridge when we come to it um let's see what else um you can go to afflictedaudio.com to see a list of our cast and crew um our trailer is also posted there and links to subscribe on apple Podcasts, spotify or just directly through rss um so people can go ahead and get that added to their queue so the moment the episode drops on monday it will be in their podcast player and they can get that and jen, um, got... make sure you drop your twitter link in the chat as yes well. please jen please. Thank yes you very much. yes jen is loop de loo l-o-o-p-d-i-l-o-u um let's see what else um I, mean, I think that's it i mean other than that like other news that i have is i got a literary agent because i told a viral twitter story back in june and Please had a bunch of people terrifying. reach out to me Thank you. <laughs> um, you know, had a few people reach out to me for that. So um, I have a literary agent and we're working on a monster biology book proposal. Well, we will be after I'm not dying um, from afflicted anymore. <laughs> um, and I, you, now we know that you need at least two people to consume an entire person's worth of blood. You have to share. Yes, Sharing is very yes, important for yes, vampires. Yes, yes, you have to share. You have to have a vampire buddy. Um, Humans are a sharing platter. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Humans yes. are a cheese boy. <laughs> okay. Um, and I have a TV and film agent, um, as well as a podcast agent as well. Um, that I oh got God. from so, so 
someone in the chat has That's said scary. one body, two straws, and now I'm imagining oh. the meat. Ooh, yeah. I mean, you could have body. like you know a straw in each carotid and right? just you know go for it. It's like yeah, like super sweet. You know, like the way they used to share milkshakes. Yes, exactly. It's <laughs> so cute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Also Vampire sorry. romance authors. There's there's something for you. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. You know, bit.ly slash black and roots. We could really, really use your help. Um, I think we're at a little under 3,000 now. I haven't looked today, you know, so we're still quite a ways from my goal of 10,000. Um, you know, every dollar absolutely counts there. We would absolutely love to hit our goal. And there are some there. absolutely amazing authors involved with this for sure. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I haven't closed that tab. I'm going to leave that one. <laughs> yeah. And some of those, some of those stories are going to be on nightlight as well. So it's not just um, in the book itself, though the funds that we get from that fundraiser are going to go to help support producing some of those stories on nightlight for people to listen to as well. Amazing. That's a great idea. Okay, thank you so much for joining us. This, this has been wonderful. Really thank amazing. you for having me. Yes. You know I love you guys. We, we love, love you too. too. It's so nice to see you. All right, everybody, we're going to take a little break and we're going to feed the ad machine again. So this is a great... <laughs> and you, love we you love too, you Jen. too, Chad. <laughs> yes. And we love Lillian. Uh, I hope she's listening. Um, so we're going to take a little ad break and say goodnight to Tanya. And then we are going to come back with some shenanigans. Um, so that you don't go to bed thinking about meat cutes over vampire victims. Meat spelled M-E-A-T. I know you spell it M-E-A-T. <laughs> Alrighty. It's like zombie. that eye zombie show where like oh, there's a uh, see, store that's called see, meat cute. Or Ryan Coley. It's all come full circle. This is perfect. <laughs> yes. yes. Alright everybody, we'll be right back.
Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. Oh, Tanya. Is she not just the coolest? She does so much cool stuff, like with shoestring budgets and just sheer, oh gosh, come on, determination. Uh, and she's so talented and she works in so many different areas. Just mind blowing. Brilliant. So cool. Brilliant. Brilliant. Cooler than most of us. Absolutely cooler than most of us. Hi, I hang with Mike Flanagan. Oh, God. <laughs> you know? Crap! That was a hell of a story. <laughs> you, did, did, you ever, did you ever see the episode of Community where Troy is introduced to LaVar Burton and just goes catatonic? <sighs> that would happen with me and Mike Flanagan. Where, where's my shenan- Where's my tangent alarm? Does it work? Let's see. No. Ah, oh, I have no buttons. I'm unbound. No! <gasps> Quick, I'll just... <laughs> yes, see? Hawkeye beat me to it. Like, okay, we'll just do it this way. It's fine. It's fine. We'll hold him to account. <sighs> yes, you are, Jungle Cloud. Jungle Lad. He survived the three weeks we were gone just fine. Look at him. He's in rude health. Positively rude health. He's done fine. Haven't baked anything with him. Uh, since we've gotten back because we were just doing a refeed and he'll probably need one more refeed before he's good to go. But I might make like Halloween sourdough candles. That would be lovely. Mm. Please do that. Uh, also, also a very, very, very cool new bakery has opened in town. It's a, apparently a chain. It's, it's a chain, but it's like a good chain. Yes, and they do lots of really good like vegan, gluten-free baked treats. They do bagel sandwiches like all day long. Thank you, Wendy. Ooh, costume you posted yesterday, huh? Mm, I'm very excited. How many wild parties did he throw while he had the place to himself? I don't know, but they cleaned up very well because there was no evidence. And that means that he got away with it as far as I'm concerned. None of my Transformers were moved or they all remembered where they were standing. So, you know. Mick says, I got an idea for a show that might get Mike Flanagan types involved. Mike Kuchichiba sometime. Maybe the audio drama hub weekend. <gasps> that would be amazing. Yes, please. So let us talk about upcoming things. Um, what? I was doing that. I was mirroring you. Let's talk about it. Okay. Was I talking with my hands too much? Yeah, you, yes. no, okay. no, not at all. You were doing that. Okay. 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 Um, so, yes, we are going to go to the audio drama hub weekend, which will be in Wiggum. Wiccan, whatever it is. Uh, uh, yay! Hi! Hi, Tanya! She's hey, Tanya. It's nice, thanks so much. Um, we'll be in Wiccan uh, November, I want to say, 18th and 19th? 17th and 18th? Yeah. That weekend. It's, it's basically Pod UK and a half, isn't it? It it's... looks to be very Pod UK-esque. And I don't think there's been announcements yet about what content is going to be happening. <gasps> Ducky, you're coming! Yay! We will, we will be there. Um, I I don't know what we'll be doing. I don't know what he'll... I do. You, you know what you'll be doing? You'll be doing things? I'm doing an act. You're doing an act? That sounds awesome. Um, why? <gasps> so he's going to! Okay, Wendy! Wendy, join us! Friends! There will be so many friends. friends. Audio yes. friends. Audio friends. So yes, we're going to go for the weekend, but it's a 40 minute drive from our house. So we get to go home every night and use my own shower and sleep in my own bed, which is fantastic. Wendy, it is a one and a half day audio podcast, audio drama meetup slash convention. Folks, um, Zalia, could you and or Jen pop a link in the chat for us, please? It's in the UK. It's in Wickham. It's in November. It's going to be a day and a half. It's going, it's a small, it is a, Pod UK Light, I guess, is maybe one way I would put it together. It's being put together by Kareem, Sarah Golding, and I believe Tin Can Audio because David Devereaux is involved with it as well. I am ridiculously well. excited at the thought of seeing the, Hag the Haggis and Dragons folks again. And meeting <gasps> Naomi and Patty, Chloe for the first time. and Naomi and Chloe and Nick are all... Yay! We will eat chips. This is going to be, be a chips. great weekend. This I can't great. wait. Okay, okay. We're, there's going to be so many photos. There will be so... This is going to be fun. Ooh, maybe we should do something live. Mm. Okay, we need to we need to collaborate <laughs> on things. We need to make plans. Yes, 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 yes. But 
do come along and join us. It's a small indie um, uh, audio convention. The tickets are relatively expensive. I think by like 22 pounds for a day or something like that. Um, <laughs> the fact that I'm going to be in the British Isles literally a week later, maybe I should change my trip dates. I don't know if it's cost effective for you to change trip dates, but if you're going to be over here and it, it works out, we would love to see you. Yes, would we would. Great. Greg's going to see the snooker that weekend, so I can rest the car for my sticky mitts. I mean, or if is, you can is, give is, the train to Reading, I can Is, is the snooker drive you. not at the Barbican? I, in, okay, in, in, okay. In we the... cannot plan this granular level with every single individual in the chat, or we will be here for the rest of the night. Y'all know how to DM us. In, we'll do it that way. In the snooker dome. <laughs> like I know it. I, I can hear that, Wendy. I can hear that tone of voice. Exactly, exactly. So that's going to be a very fun weekend. There are going to be lots of people there, including us, and half the chat, apparently. Come along with us and the rest of the... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. Keep it as humble. It's all good. That is going to be happening. Where's the snooker? How the fuck should I know? That'll be a very good time. I think that's all we've got as far as events. No! <laughs> For there is Sunday. And on Sunday... Uh, Patty and I are driving down from Glasgow on Thursday. Definitely not a twelve-hour trip. Yeah, that's 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 a long drive, my friend. Please take your time. I mean, I would be fine with it, but I'm a filthy Californian, and I like that kind of thing. So you're a radiant Californian. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We were talking about Halloween. So, uh, uh if my family wouldn't murder me for skipping Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving's in the heart. Just celebrate Canadian Thanksgiving instead of American yes, Thanksgiving. Yes, Wendy's in. You'll yes. be fine. <laughs> oh, yes, it's in York. I'm totally coming. Good. Yahoo! All right. I know where you live. Greg can bloody walk. Oh, no, this is good. This is can, this can be, I can give the mods all the gifts. I bought them from Italy. Yay, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes, Jen, you are also a filthy Californian, but you are not driving across the Atlantic Ocean, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, lifts available from New York. Okay, so Wendy and Zalia have a chat. There we go. Excellent. See, I have organized this while I'm delivering content at the same time. I'm, I'm just that good. Halloween is on Monday. I just want to enter into the record. I am not the person who's taking us off on these, these tangents. What tangents? I'm not tangenting. I'm multitasking. So. Continue. <laughs> in, conclusion, in conclusion, my arm, my arm is, is healed. healed. Yes, exactly. Okay. Sunday is... Oh God! What do we call it? The observation of Halloween, because Halloween is Monday the itself. Perception of Halloween. Uh, but every horde person and their dog are are doing the contents on the Sunday. So instead of playing Dooley's <laughs> ever shrinking ritual robe, traveling <sighs> through the motherland. One size fits most. Oh, that, yeah! Please tell me you all saw the Halloween costume meme that the. Dark Side Detective crew did. It was TMA 2, TMA Harder. <laughs> yes, we're getting there. Um, Sunday, Halloween. Instead of playing Dark Side Detective, we are going to play Mothman 1966, which is a horror themed indie. Basically, point and click. Yeah, point and click game, um, which will be fun. And we'll play. It's supposed to last 90 minutes, which so means it'll take hours. us three hours. So it'll be a longer, maybe four, if we take breaks for pancakes, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so we're going to play through that for Halloween on Sunday morning. And then we will probably try and make an appearance at the Afflicted Supporters launch, launch event. Party. I have all the details on that. And then, so Rusty Quill's been busy, apparently, this last week. Um, and... On Sunday, I don't know what time it starts. What is it? Seven o'clock? Seven thirty, I think. Seven thirty-ish, something like that. It's two Magnus, two archives is my favorite so far because it sticks to the pattern. Um, they are doing a live stream AMA Q and A sort of thing <clears throat> with special guests. So you know you might want to stick around and see what special guests. I make an appearance. I'm not saying the captain's going to be on deck, but I'm not not saying that. The most special of guests. Aww. Aww. Thank you all. So yes, there's going to be a whole lot going on on Sunday available for everybody. Is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, we could do a whole hour just sitting here and and speculating on what the heck is going on. I was wrong. Because when they started to do this whole, mm, something's going to happen, I was like, you going to do an RPG? An RPG would be a really good thing for oh, them to Wendy, do next. Oh, Wendy, the lonely special, specialist guy. He is Aww. the lonely specialist guy. Um, <laughs> but apparently not. Apparently... Three new seasons. Holy heck. Seasons of the Kickstarter. <laughs> Three seasons of the Kickstarter. Yeah, exactly. So um, we have just as many questions as you do. So we will also be kind of glued to developments on Sunday. And I'm sure as a result, we'll have a whole heck of a lot to talk about next week. Yes. If I end up on the AMA, that, that may go badly. You're just going to make up answers? <laughs> I, I'm either going to make up answers or say, so we have this question, so who's coming back? Well, I, I know, Alex, who's coming back? <laughs> Don't look at me, look at them. Who's coming back? Exactly. Uh, yeah, so. Mud dingus. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Who knows? I was going to say something else that came. Oh, and then next week so for the next couple of weeks we will probably we'll be playing probably ignite uh inscription because we had just started to kind of crack the code on like the little mini puzzles inside the game and what the heck was going on and you know we had to go through things all over again Why are his hands I, 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 I have like his so hands. many unanswered questions about that game it's super creepy but we're only going to be playing that super creepy game for about what three weeks because the fourth week, i.e. I think it's the 21st or 22nd of November, Scarlet Hollow is releasing Chapter 4. And we are so excited to play the new chapter of Scarlet Hollow. More Gretchen. More Gretchen. You, you're still convinced there's going to be a whole dog... Runs for mayor. The subplot. dog wing. I need the dog wing. I need the dog political subplot. I need it. <laughs> West wing, but with dogs in Scarlet Hollow. Can you not hear the West wing theme tune just with the word "bork"? <laughs> no, I'm not going to sing that. <laughs> Scarlet Hollow. Scarlet, Scarlet Hollow. Hollow. Yes, exactly. Gretchen for mayor. See, I think Gretchen's going to run for mayor as well. I think it would be a good thing for them to do. But yes. Uh, November 21st, 2nd-ish, somewhere in there. And that means that there's a good chance that what we're actually getting is three chunks of Black Tabby Games uh, games across the next year. Because they're doing Scarlet Hollow 4, then I would imagine the full version of Slay the Princess. Yay! Then Scarlet Hollow 5. Yes, I think they have seven <clears throat> chapters yes. of Scarlet Hollow plans. So, oh, there's, got, there's so much good stuff. There's so much good stuff. And then on, like, on Sunday morning, we still have, like, Six chapters, and there will be a seventh chapter by the time we get there because yep. I think, like the, this the week, bonus mission like today or week. tomorrow, they're dropping their Halloween bonus mission for Dark Side Two. I also think, or I'm sure I read somewhere they are actively developing Dark Side Three. I'm very excited about that. And there was something else. Oh, and then, um, well, if we're gonna have. All of our stream mods in one place at one time. Very soon, we could plan what we want to do for Christmas. Mm. There are there are plans. We have a couple of options. Some of it depends on if there are third parties we can inveigle, uh, and some of it depends on maybe turning the camera around a little bit and and letting our beloved stream mods. Take the stage. Take the stage. So, so yes, plans are afoot to to figure out all of that sort of thing. <laughs> Turn the beat around. Well, no, no, I'm gonna have a stop. Mm, 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 Thank you. Should we do some shenanigans? Mm, 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 mm. I thought I already right. was. Well, you are a walking shenanigan. But let's do some like official shenanigans, right? And 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 I just gotta say. I, I'm very much looking forward to the whole new, like, raft of fan art. Like, I went on Tumblr for the first time in a couple of months. It's and I'm like, Y'all been busy! Yes, very much so. Very much. And TikTok? Ooh, TikTok is choice right now in the Mega Space. Very fun. But let us do some shenanigans. Shenanigans. So this one 
Uh, I become a pumpkin in nine minutes. Clocks to contention people. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let's do this one first. We may only do one. All right. This is from 30 Knives. And it was posted on my birthday. Oh, that's mm -hmm. nice. Okay. Remember to provide enrichment for your backstabbing counselors, scheming viziers, and nefarious court wizards. Consider adding some or all of the following to their enclosures. An eerily pristine rose garden with extremely sharp thorns. Statues of yourself or busts of your face for them to smash against the wall. A pair or triplet of orphans with a disgustingly large fortune. Secret passageways and lairs. Remember, they get stressed if left out in the open for too long. An animal companion who is also inexplicably evil. A chess set where the white side has your house crest emblazoned upon the pieces so they can symbolically tip over the king while chuckling maniacally. Hidden daggers! Everywhere! Truly, you cannot have too many hidden daggers. If this doesn't work, you can always consider letting them think they killed you for a bit. Just slumping over after enjoying your evening wine can do a world of good. Just let them get the monologues out of their systems every now and again. We all know caring for schemers can be a big hassle, but it is so, so worth it to see the hate in their eyes. As they smile treacherously at you each morning. That's what being a pet owner is all about. Ideally, if you adopt a schemer, it's a good idea to provide them with a companion. They're a very social species, especially in their middle years where behaviors like flouncing, cackling, and extended monologues are in their most prominent display. A lackey or flunky is ideal. If you have limited space in your palace, consider an intelligent bird like a corvid or a parrot. Training a parrot to speak will provide additional enrichment beyond simply having a companion. If you keep your schema in larger quarters, a matched pair of incompetent lackeys from the same litter is ideal. Another option is to provide them with a nemesis. Captains of the guard are a very popular choice, as they are in generally as they are in general perfectly capable of keeping up with the spirited levels of mischief of a happy schemer. If you enjoy a challenge, a femme fatale has similar care requirements to a schemer and displays similar behavior, making them a lively pair to keep together. Initial settling process can be unpredictable, and their relationships tend to vacillate between competition and alliance, making it troublesome <laughs> to establish a routine. Keeping separate quarters and feeding routines will help. They can become more complicated to tend to long term, but it can be one of the more rewarding choices you can make. Depending on their genders, they may even opt to nest together, producing rare dynastic variations on their breed standard. Oh, jeez. Ben Patel slash schemer, ship it, yeah, totally. See, all that flashes me back to is the, the no, see, those aren't goons, those are henchmen. Conversation. We can't talk about the ending of She Hulk. We don't have that kind of time. We don't have that kind of time. When he needs to go to bed, and we don't know if everybody's caught up with all of She Hulk. So, see you soon, Hawkeye. Thanks for joining us. No problem. Have a good night. Uh, do we want to just cut it there, or we'll save the other one for later? You know later? what? It would give Wendy a whole extra five minutes. I know. I I, let's uh, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Right. We'll save the other shenanigan for next time. Thank you so much for joining us, folks. This did has been we, so much fun. Did we cover everything? Feels like everything went really fast. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Guys. Good night, we Wendy. You we love you too. Or we will see you soon. Um, so yeah, we'll be back on Friday with Friday the full Ed, our weekly, frequently award nominated pop culture <laughs> newsletter with its special Halloween livery. Yes, exactly. It's going to be Halloween issue. Oh, yes. Do remember that the clocks go back on Sunday. So the Sunday stream time will feel weird. Wait a second. This is the get an extra hour in bed one, isn't it? Call back. That is correct. Stupid. With it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Which means I have an extra hour to maybe make pancakes. Or like sausage rolls. Or maybe. sleep. <laughs> What's that? Yes. And on that note... <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, folks. We'll see you on Friday with the full lid and Sunday for Halloween nonsense. Yes. Uh, thank you so much to Tanya and Jen for joining us and for our amazing mods and to all of you for, li for listening and for playing. I've been Alistair. I've been Marguerite. And this has been great. We'll see you next time. We'll see you soon, everybody. Have a good one.